What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Coach's Corner. I'm your host, Coach T Mac. Today, we're talking a little known receiver technique that can be an absolute game changer for your outside receivers the hydrant. If you want to catch these conversations live, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening, and sometimes on Sunday. But make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to catch all the interview and conversation uploads. Now, hit them with the intro. It parts like the Red Sea when he touches them. No, it's, it's like when, when you hear that you made the 105, it's like Christmas morning. But my, if the ball comes in the B-gap, i got to make that play. Right? So not everybody starts at ground zero equally. Excited to get into some wide receiver technique. This is this is my alley. This is this is what I live for. The hydrant is a sideline technique to ensure that you make a catch and it gets counted as complete and being in bounds. One of the biggest things for people is being able to increase their catch radius. What is catch radius? It is the amount of ground that you can cover and the amount of space that you can catch a ball in. And how can you increase that if you're 5'6", right? Because you're always going to be 5'6". And if you're standing next to a guy that's 6'6", he's going to have a naturally bigger catch radius. True. But if he doesn't understand body control and certain aspects of it, then he's not. he has a very limited catch radius where if you do understand body control and you do understand how to manipulate your catch radius, you can cover more area potentially than the kid that's a foot taller than you. So what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about working the sideline, working the back of the end zone. All of these things apply. Honestly, working the front of the end zone. From an NFL standpoint, you see it, Santonio Holmes, when he was still in Pittsburgh, does it uh, on the front of the end zone, makes a play. Um, but what we're talking about is mainly going to focus on the sideline aspect of this and increasing your catch radius beyond the field of play. And it's called, like I said, the hydrant. All right. It's not best way to beat press. Is it really, is, is there really that much of a delay? Hey, best way to beat press. It is not that. I we will we will talk releases and how to beat press coverage. I guarantee you. So if you're not following and you don't have notifications set on your phone, please do that now because you're gonna want to hear that conversation. But for any guy that ever catches a ball outside the numbers near the sideline, the hydrant technique is something that they have to to be able to master because it extends your catch radius and it extends the window to throw into beyond the field of play and not just the length of your arm. Okay, so what am I talking about? Before I get into the, the nitty gritty detail, we're just going to go straight to the tape and I'm going to show you. Right. Everybody's seen this picture. How did he do that? Was that just like intuition? And the funny thing is, is that this picture is what? From 2018, 2017. Okay. And the film I'm about to show you is from 2012. Okay. But this is Colin Johnson. Extend he's a big framed receiver and he's extending his catch radius almost two thirds of his body length outside the field of play. Okay. He's taking his hips completely past the, the out of bounds line plus the extension of his arms. And honestly, even with the frame this size and even with the technique he's using, this is actually limited, okay, based off of what he could do because of the leg that he extends. The ball's coming from this way, okay? And what you want to do is you want to extend the back leg and you want to keep your near toe down, all right? So this is what it should look like in still form, all right? And we'll just, I'll just jump over like this, all right? And I want you to watch top of the screen, okay? Scramble. He's already, he's already started working the sideline because of how close he is, right? Right there. Very subtle, okay? In this one, he was able to do it, but he didn't necessarily have to extend as far as Colin Johnson. But it does two things. You see this guy's eyes? What is he looking at? What's he looking at? Somebody in chat tell me what this guy's looking at. 
I'll run it back one more time and somebody tell me what that ref is looking at. His eyes never move from his, exactly, Wester. His feet. He's making sure because there's another guy over here that watches the ball. Okay? All right. They compartmentalize. Knock, knock. It's your favorite fullback. There he is. What's up, Parrot? Man, thanks for stopping by. Um, so refs compartmentalize sideline plays like this. Okay? One guy's watching the ball. One guy's watching his feet. All right? So what you see right here, we'll play it, and I'll try and stop it right as he catches it. See how good I am. All right. You see this guy staring straight at the ground. Okay. Making sure that that's, that foot is in bounds. Okay. This guy back here is watching the ball to make sure that they secure it. Favorite third and one completion. <laughs> um, but the reason that they do that is because they know the human brain can't process this much information at one time. So he takes in one piece. He takes in the other. What does this allow you to do? Okay, this is a manipulation of the rules. Okay, and it's not, you're not cheating, you're not doing anything like that, but you're understanding what the referee's assignment is and you're playing it into your favor. Okay, all he's making sure is that there is one foot in bounds. This is NCAA, this is college football, high school football follows the same rules. You gotta have one foot. Okay, that's it. NFL is a slightly different story. Okay, but as long as you have that foot down and then drag that toe, as you extend out of bounds, it creates the perception that you are securing the catch or you are extending your body and your time in bounds to ensure a completion. All right. 99% of the high school games are played on field turf these days anyway. So when those pellets fly, okay, they're going to mark it as a complete catch. All right. Now, how do you get there? How do you make this, okay, and this happen? Okay, what I want you to see, we got another clip we'll watch here in a second. What I want you to see when I run it back, okay, and I'm going to run this in slow motion so you can really tell what's going on. Oh, that's the wrong one. Normal. We'll just take it down to three-quarter speed, all right? Watch his feet. Watch his feet as the ball approaches, okay? He plants his near foot, okay? When I say near foot, foot nearest the quarterback. He plants his near foot as close to the out of bounds line as he can. And then he, ex he drives his back knee up and out towards the out of bounds. Okay. Why does he come up and out? Because that's going to bring weight off of the ball of his near foot. So he can drag that toe across the out of bounds line. Okay. As he's doing that, he's moving his center of gravity. Okay. And his core which now extends how far his arm reaches out of bounds. Okay? Run it back and watch it again. Here, let me slow it down even more. Stick, drive. Okay? Right there. Again, this guy's watching all feet all day. This guy back here is watching the ball. He secured it. Everything's great. Now, we're talking about near foot, back knee drive. Why is all of that important? It's twofold. Like I said, okay, you want to drive that back knee out of bounds because it's going to allow you to extend the catch radius just a little bit further, but it also protects you, okay? If you drive this knee, okay, then it's going to start to turn your shoulders, and if this guy's coming downhill, it's going to open you up for him to rake through, punch the ball out. When you drive your back knee, it allows your shoulders to stay more parallel to the line of scrimmage, okay, which eliminates his ability to reach the ball and it protects it whenever you tuck it, okay? So again, check it right here. He's going to drag that toe first down, no big deal. All right, let's go to another clip. Same, same principle, same technique, different game. Why am I only using this guy? Two reasons. Okay. Pair it safer to just run the fullback dive. Yeah. You're not on first and 10. We're not running the fullback dive on first and 10. We're not running the fullback dive on third and eight, but I appreciate you hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe if you got a Twitch prime. All right. So now same idea. Oh, forgot to turn the sound off. 
Don't want to get crappy, copyright infringement right there. Okay, look, he's, this is the perfect angle to see how he's protecting the football with his body. Okay, that DB has no chance of touching that football. All right, it's just like when you track a ball over your shoulder. It's just like when you come back down your stem to secure a catch, you're putting yourself, it's just like when you call for the ball on the block, right? Or you go up for a rebound. Okay. You're putting yourself between the ball and the defender to eliminate his ability to make a play on it. All right. But the same thing's going to happen. All right. Drives the ball out of bounds, secure the catch out of bounds. No big deal. Right. And that's all predicated on your understanding of body control, body position, and playing by the rules that you play under. Okay? Triple option. It, this is a triple option. It's just a passing triple option, Parrot. You'll understand one day. Okay? The hydrant. Okay? What you see right here is as the ball approached him, he planted that near foot in the ground and prepared his knee to drive it out of bounds to extend his catch radius and eliminate the, the DB's ability to attack the ball. Okay? The hydrant, man. This is, this is big time stuff. All right? Now, it also makes sure that he's getting out of bounds, he's stopping the clock, he's protecting the football, he's doing all those things from a football game standpoint. All right, but this is why you got to understand what game you're playing and what your rules are. Guys that come out in high school and college games and they try and toe tap, and they try and get both feet down, that's awesome. Cool. If you're playing on Sundays, you better be able to do that. But you're not yet. Play by the rules that you're playing under, okay? Be great at those rules and then adapt as you climb to the next level. Guys in Texas, you play by NCAA rules anyway, so the rules are going to be exactly the same when you go on to play at the next level. Body positioning and using leverage, 200 IQ plays. That's right, Smitty. This is what we do. This is what we do right here. Okay. 200 IQ plays. I'll slow this one down just so y'all can see it. All right. But my man Lenny, Lanier Sampson, was a stud at this. I mean, I taught him how to do it, but that's not true. I didn't teach him how to do it. We learned at the same time. Right there. And he's got clip after clip after clip. Okay. Now, let me go for Colin, great question. Best ways to beat press. Best ways to have a great, best way to have a great press release, okay, is you have to be moving forward, okay? I used to be super anti-foot fire, and I, I, I'm, I don't, I think that gets a bad rap. It doesn't allow the defender to defend if done properly. 100%, Smitty. One. 100%. It you can't there's nothing you can do from a DB standpoint to that play. If I do my job and I use great technique, there's nothing you can do. Okay? Now Colin. Let me pull something up to show. Give me just a second. But like I was saying, I used to be really anti foot fire. And the biggest reason I was anti foot fire is because when people just spitball foot fire, you don't go anywhere, right? You're, you're just picking them up and putting them down. The way to have a great press release is to kill cushion. Because if you just follow that rule, then it's not how do I beat press release. It's how do I have a release. Your first thing is a step on their toes. It doesn't matter where their toes are. Their toes could be six inches away. Their toes could be six yards away. Their toes could be... 12 yards away got to go step on them so if every step you're gaining ground and you're moving forward then you're gonna have a chance to have a great release you've got to kill that gap okay and you've got to play t in tight space okay protect your chest kill the cushion and then get on top that's it the good ones can release inside and outside on every route or sorry the great ones can inside release and outside release, and the great ones can outside release and inside release on every route. If you're good, you're going to in inside release an inside breaking route or outside release an outside breaking route. If you're great, you're going to do whatever you're, you want to that guy. I don't even know if this one's going to show it, Colin. Let me go back to normal speed. Nope. 
Give me just a second. I'm trying to find the right angle so you can see the the beauty of the play. Is this it? I'm almost there. There we go. All right. So this is going to be a great example of how to be how to have a great press release in tight space. This is man coverage all day. It's not even close. Everybody knows it. Okay. So what I want you to do is watch how tight he plays in space. Okay, let me bring this. All right, Matt Millen's talking. He's going to say some stuff that doesn't matter, but you're looking at the bottom of the screen too, okay? But watch how quickly he, there's nothing, there's nothing about it at the line, okay? He knows it's man free. He's on him. He's on him. This guy's a plus. These two guys are taking the back depending on which way he goes. This guy's in the middle of the field. I got to cover somebody, right? But he knows right now I'm off the line, so he can't reach out and touch me. And I know that I got I can win outside. That's that's the that's the goal. If I have it, I take it. Okay. Just run, baby. Just run. Fastest place way to get from point A to point B is a straight line. Take off and get there. Now, he's there, right? He's even. We're leaving. Watch what he does from the 28 yard line right here. To there. Didn't look like much, but run it back. We're next to each other. 28, 27 yard line, we're next to each other. You're in chase mode. Because in those 15 yards, okay, I made sure to put myself between the defender and the ball. There's a lot of repetition in all these receiver techniques, okay? Throw and position on the field is going to dictate how you get there, but at the end of the day, the goal is to put yourself between the ball and the defender, okay? Watch. Right here. They're even. They're even, baby. Now we squeeze. I've gone from outside this person to on top of this person, What's up, Heath? Heath, you missed a good one, man. We've already moved on to technique two, but you, I, I might go, but I'll circle back to the hydrant for you, Heath. All right. Boom. Touchdown. I'm faster than you are. But it's not just because I'm faster than you are. I'm playing faster than you are because I know where I'm going and you don't. Okay. Guy had no chance. 30-yard line, 29-yard line, we're even, okay? I'm, I'm three, three and a half yards outside the numbers. I'm on top. Now I'm two yards outside the numbers. I'll check out the replay. Appreciate it, Heath. And that's all it takes, fellas. That's all it takes. It's all about body position and body control, okay? So to circle back and really def definitively answer your question, Colin, the best way to beat press coverage is to play fast, and make every step do something. Don't just pick them up and put them down. Okay, cover ground. Kill the cushion. Play with speed. And play in tight space. Because you notice, run it back one more time. They're shoulder to shoulder. He's not running away from this guy. He's not running out here. Okay, because when he runs out here, he's got to cover more ground to get back on top. Okay, tight is right, baby. That's what she told me. Tight is right. That's what you want. Tight is right. You want to be, look, ball still in his hand. For all intents and purposes, based on how much these guys practice, he's covered. That, that defender is between the receiver and the ball right now. Okay, that quarterback sees the back of that defender, and he can't see the number or the chest of his player. But he knows, because he's a well-coached receiver, he knows he has great technique, that even though he's covered early, He's going to be open late. How's he going to be open late? Play with speed, stack him on top, body position, touchdown. That's all it takes. Now, obviously, these are very good athletes. They're doing something right physically, okay? But these techniques apply to any level of the game. You've got to be able to do that. You can't try and just run away from everybody. 
You got to use your body, position it between the defender and the ball. Okay. And then the catch becomes the most important, but it's not the most important at the beginning. You got to do everything else right to give yourself the opportunity to try and catch it, to have that catch, to have that touchdown. All right. What else we got? That's all I really had planned on talking. I'm down to talk about anything though. Y'all throw something out there. Also, don't forget, like, uh, follow the channel, click the heart, um, Twitch Prime. If you have it, it expires every month, so don't be afraid to re-up it. Just go back in, click that resubscribe, all that good stuff. Shameless plugs. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel. We've got two football coaches corner videos up right now. There'll be more. Do you teach back shoulder throws? 100%. Heath, when you got a kid on the outside, 6'6", six, six, if you're not teaching back shoulders, you're doing something wrong, brother. No, but yeah, we do. Um, but it has to be, you can't just be like, hey, don't forget you have this. 95% of the time, you're going to have one, maybe two guys that really understand the body control aspect and, and have the confidence to go out there and execute it. Um, and it kind of, which I know seems counterintuitive because you're treating kids different, but I mean, different athletes need different techniques, right? And if you're week four, five, six, and, and you've just been crushing guys with deep balls over the shoulder, um, and you know that they're going to be heavy bail, you see that first, second, third drive that they're playing man, but they're playing heavy bail, then you got to have that ace in the hole. How are you coaching it? So the biggest way we coach it is that it's going to occur at the the throw is going to occur 14 to 18 yards and it's going to be something at, right now for us our kids are going to they're going to communicate it in some form or fashion they're going to know it's not something that they just hey when we call this play you've got this as your as your ace in the hole as well right it's going to be something they communicate and so that way the quarterback knows that he's three in a hitch let the ball go 14 to 18 yards and that way the db or the receiver can set up the db right and the biggest way we set the the, the db up is that everything looks the same from this play Let me run it back. I'll pull this back up, Heath. So everything looks the same up to that point, right? You're in perfect, right here, you're in perfect back, back shoulder position. So what he doesn't do is he allows himself to be covered, right? Because this guy thinks, oh, I've got him. So he doesn't really begin to work for the stack. Is your aiming point for the QB, the receiver's butt? It's No, it's his armpit. I don't want to I don't want to throw butt because the ball is going to die more than he thinks it is anyway. And so I want it to have a little bit more carry. I don't really like low back shoulders. I like them to be like shoulder shoulder like shoulder height. Um but everything is going to be the same up to the that 10 to 12 yard mark except now we're not going to squeeze the stack. We're just going to stay covered and as soon as that ball leaves his hand, stick, spin, catch. And when I say stick, spin, catch, he's going to stick his outside foot hard into the ground. He's going to throw his inside elbow. He's going to elbow the midget. Hopefully that word doesn't get me in trouble. He's going to stick his outside foot. He's going to throw his inside elbow to elbow the midget, okay, which will take his core, his chest to the ball, and then he can extend late for the catch. And I wish I would have known you were going to ask that because I would have, I could have pulled the tape up, but that's the biggest way we coach it. So you're going to do everything from 10, from zero to 10, the exact same way. And I'm going to look at the 10 mark and then I'm going to expect the ball from the 12 uh, or the 14 to the 18 mark and have this guy begin to low back shoulders equal knee injuries. Uh, yes and no, it can. Uh, the Urban Meyer technique, punch kick. Wait punch kick i don't know that one you'll have to go into more detail heath but um that's that's just how we teach it that's the way that i was able to have success with it um and and i think it's really effective we've had guys that have of all shapes and sizes big tall short you know quick twitch long stride that do it that way and they i think it's the most consistent way for us to teach it and kind of cover all bases um but that's my big thing Punch outside foot into the ground, kick inside leg out, help sink hips and break down. So, okay. So the only thing I don't like about using your leg to turn, I, I love, I love using the, the kick inside for 
like hip turn for DBs. The only thing I don't like about it with um, uh, receivers, like in this situation, is that without you, if you're not putting some sort of emphasis on your arms, they're going to get out of control. And I think that it really helps to 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 emphasize, yeah, we're going to drive that outside foot and then we're going to keep our elbow involved to turn our core because now we're balancing out what we're using to turn. I think, I feel like if you use, if you use your leg to turn, you're going to begin to fade and we really want to have almost a stop and a lateral movement helps sink hips and break down. I've got one of his old school coaching videos from when he was at Notre Dame. Of course you do. If it's got Notre Dame on it, I know you've got it. But, and that's just, I mean, that's just my cup of tea, right? Urban Meyer clearly knows what he's doing. He's won a lot of games, a couple of national titles. But I, I just feel better because I don't want my guys fading into their back shoulders. I really want them moving laterally. Oh, you have to work hands with it. Exactly. That's where I'm at. So I would rather just focus on that, using that tight elbow turn to get around because it's going to allow them to think, yeah, feet, hands, and eyes. Exactly. So that's going to get them to think laterally instead of backwards. So, um, those are just a coach. I think we're kind of getting to the same point. We're just emphasizing different things, using different talking points to accomplish it. But that's how that's how I approach it.